Hello guys, this is Panzermeister36. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how I painted this little Panzer III crewman from the Deutsches Afrika Corps for my Panzer III in North Africa build that I've done recently. Now, I had not painted a figure in probably four years, if not more, before I painted this guy. Um, so we're not doing anything too crazy today, but I think that since I did fairly basic techniques, maybe if some of you guys are looking at starting to paint figures yourselves or looking at, you know, getting into it, this video might help you out. So let's get started. To begin, I had to, of course, build the figure. He was this guy from this master box set. I'm not going to bore you with the assembly, but the main important thing is to mount him on a little handhold. So I drilled out a couple of little holes, two holes, otherwise he will rotate when you try to paint him. And then I glued a little bit of track pin from Metal Tracks. I just super glued it into the holes, and then I can use this to mount him into a little cork, and this makes a much easier handhold. You don't want to hold the figure because you're going to wear the paint off it, and it's much more awkward. I'm going to start by priming him with some black. I'm using the MIG Ammo One Shot, which is rebranded Badger Stano Res. This is excellent primer. You pour it straight into your airbrush, and then spray it on at like 20-25 PSI. Coverage is great, and it really flattens out once it's dry. It's the ultimate primer. The next step is of course to paint the flesh areas. The only paint I have that's flesh colored is this Tamiya XF93. Usually I would brush paint the flesh, but Tamiya paint does not brush paint well, so I airbrush this color on. If I would have had a brush paintable flesh color, I would have simply brush painted it on the flesh areas. But again, I only have this paint, so I have to airbrush it on. But if you have, you know, no airbrush or whatever, you can easily brush paint your own paint on the flesh. For paint brushing, I'm going to use this Windsor & Newton 00 round brush. It's not anything special. And then for the actual paint, I'm going to use these brand new AK Gen 3 paints. They're really good for paint brushing. Now I don't have any precise colors, so I'm going to have to mix this all up myself. Hopefully they have some paint sets that come out soon. I'm going to start with some AK Middlestone, and then I'm going to add some of this light green, which is a very, very light green. It's like highlighter green. And then I added some chocolate chipping brown. And then I added some US dark green. I'm really just adding more paint until the mixture is something that I like. So it's kind of just a random mixture. Uh, but you can kind of see how the color eventually is how I like it. This is the base coat for the tunic. So I'm just going to apply it over the entire area. We'll go back and add the highlights and shadows in a minute. These AK Gen 3 paints brush really well, but they do require a little bit of thinning with water. Now I'm going to take some of this rubber black and I'm going to mix that with some of the previous green color so I get a darker color. This is going to be our shadow color, which we're going to paint in all the areas where we want to emphasize the shadows. So that's either the the molded folds into his into his basically shirt on the model. We can get into the crevices there and paint this color. And also some areas like underneath the uh, obviously his pockets on the front there, underneath his collar, and also underneath his arms. I'm also going to apply some of this color as well to emphasize these shadows. Now for the highlights, I went back to my previous paint mixture, and I just took some of the paint that was lighter around the edges of my mixture. Before we were applying the shadows inside the depths of all these folds, now I'm going to dry brush this lighter mixture over the tops of these folds. So just a little bit on my brush and I can gently rub over it and that paint will catch on all the raised details. In some areas you have to be a little more precise and dry brushing won't really work. So you can carefully brush on a little bit of highlights in some of the areas that require it.
With the shirt done, I now moved on to the hat. My mixture was about equal parts of buff and US dark green. And then once again, we're going to start with our base coat. Now, I'm not sure if my uniform is entirely historically accurate in how I painted it, but I'm doing my best here. So I'm picking a lighter color for the hat because that's what you sometimes see. I added a little bit of black and made a darker mixture, which we are going to once again paint into the shadow areas of all the folds and details. Sometimes it's a little bit excessive, so I can easily take some of my previous base color and tidy up some of the areas where my painted shadows are a little bit too wide. Now I take some of the ice yellow color, which is a much lighter pale yellow, and I'm going to paint the highlights with this color. Again, same thing we did with the tunic. We're going to catch the edges of all the details, like the folds, the brim of the hat, and so on. And this adds a nice contrast versus the darker color we applied just a minute ago. This is super, super fine work, um, so it's probably tricky for some people but I've still got my good vision because I'm young, so it's not too hard for me. I'm going to use these three colors here in a couple of areas to paint some details. He has, of course, buttons, his shoulder flaps, the things on his collar, and of course, the little things on his hat as well. They all need to be painted. I had a reference photo, so I just based it off that. Again, I have no idea how correct this actually is but it looks good to me, so that's good enough. <laughs> On his scarf, I base painted it with the basalt gray color, and then I went back with a little bit of a lighter mixture. I added a little bit of white to it and painted some highlights. Though eventually I went back and repainted this with a darker red color, just to add some more interest to the figure. I'm going to use AK Rubber Black as a base color for the binoculars. Again, as with all the paints I've been using so far here, this is thinned with a little bit of water. I'm now going to use the Basalt Gray color we used previously, and we're going to dry brush this to catch the highlights and the details of the binoculars to make them pop out. And with that, we've painted all the fabric and details on this figure, everything except for the skin. And I think it actually looks really, really good. These AK Gen 3 paints are excellent for brush painting. I really recommend them if you're going for brush painting. And maybe you learn some good techniques there for painting fabric and stuff. Now let's move on to the skin. For the shading on the flesh areas, I'm going to use some oil paints instead of acrylics. I have a selection of wilder paints here. I have a dark red and then also two actual skin color oil paints. I also have some wilder enamel thinner, which is useful for blending the colors. I did have more oil paints on hand, but I only used those three I showed beforehand. And I used oil paints on the flesh because the fabric has much more sharp areas of highlight and shadow because there's folds. But of course the skin is much more soft, there aren't really any sharp details, especially on the arms. So I'm using oil paints because they're much easier to blend and get softer transitions between highlight and shadow. So I'm using the, the two colors here, which were the skin colors, to paint some highlights on areas like the cheekbones, details of the arms the ears, the fingers, and so on. It's almost like dry brushing, and then I go back with a little bit of thinner on my brush I can blend it out. Now for the shadows, I use that dark red color I showed before and apply that to the bottoms of the arms and the bottoms of the hands and other areas that should be in more shadow. Again, the same process. First, I'm going to apply a little bit of the oil paint into these regions where I want the, uh, the shadows and then I can take a little bit of thinner on my brush and soften the transitions and blend it out a little bit more so it's more subtle. 
I have never painted hair before, so today's gonna be a first. I have this chocolate chipping color we used previously. I've thinned it down and I'm just gonna apply what I'm hoping is gonna look like hair. <laughs> just small brush strokes. I'm not gonna overdo it. This guy does not have much hair, I guess. But I wanted to, of course, add that effect because he's not bald. So we're just gonna apply some little brush strokes and make what is supposed to look like hair. And the result actually didn't look that bad. I think that I can definitely improve here with maybe using a couple of different colors, but this doesn't look bad at all. For the last detail, I'm going to use Wilder Murky Water, which is a enamel gloss varnish. And I'm going to take a little bit of it and apply it into the lenses of his binoculars. Just a small drop, and this will dry and give us a nice glassy sheen. And there we go. He is all finished, and I think that he looks very decent for my first attempt at painting a figure in about four years. I'm very pleased with how all the folds came out on his shirt. You know, painting the shadows and highlights there isn't easy, but I think those AK Gen 3 paints definitely make my brush painting skills look a little bit better than they actually are. Those are some seriously good brush painting paints. And I'm going to be buying some more so I can do some flesh painting with acrylics as well in the future. Anyways, I have a bunch more figures on hand that I have not touched in a long time. But maybe we will be seeing some of those coming up soon on my channel. Because painting this figure has definitely made me think that I should try to get back into this because it is very, very fun. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on below. I always read through them all. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Those guys really helped me out buying the paints and products you guys see in these videos. Here's what I used. As always, goodbye, happy mauling, and I will see you next time.